So good afternoon. I just wanted to talk with you all. We are very fortunate that we received an $800,000 grant from the National Science Foundation. And so this is a grant to help the Roanoke region. And I wanted to take about 10 minutes and describe what are the, the goals and the objectives and how can the grant help Virginia Western. So it is with the National Science Foundation and a subgroup of NSF called ATE, which is Advanced Technician Education. So nationally, there's a subdivision of NSF that's focusing on creating the engineering technicians that we need. And of course, this is part of the Virginia STEM initiative. The picture at the top shows typical students and careers in mechatronics. A lot of people don't understand what could a, an educational career in mechatronics be. So from designing ships to transporting energy to airplanes, uh, there's a robot here holding a printed circuit board. So there's lots of aspects and hopefully after the 10 minutes you'll have a better understanding of what mechatronics is. <clears throat> so there's an acronym. And my co-PI hates acronyms, so we will define what the acronym means, PACE. <clears throat> the grant was written for uh, Jerry Pace, who was on our Educational Foundation board. He had the vision for this grant, and he passed away in the middle of a semester. So after that occurred, I decided we would write this grant in honor of Jerry Pace. And so that the PACE stands for Partnerships Between Education and Industry. The A stands for Advanced Engineering Technology. Career, career planning and development. So we, t we hear a lot of talk about jobs, but we need more focus on careers and not jobs. And then education. I spent three weeks in Berlin, Germany, learning from Siemens the, the systems approach to education, and that's relevance first. We all have a lot of students in our classroom that don't really know why they're learning a certain topic, so we, we must instill in them the desire to want to learn, and that is showing relevance first. So there's the PACE part of the acronym. And M, ME, stands for mechatronics, which is the study of the integration of mechanical, electrical, and information engineering technology, and E, engineering the application of science, math, and economics for social and practical knowledge. Bunch of words, let's look at a picture. This is the best graphic I know of to define what mechatronics is. It is the integration of this mechanical, electrical, and IT. So mecha, mechanical, electronics, and IT is also included in that mix. And then around the outside of the circle are all the career pathways. If I call my program a manufacturing engineering technology program, either they take off running unless you staple their foot to the floor, right? Manufacturing has a negative connotation. And so we want to not disillusion the students to say this isn't manufacturing, but it's not only manufacturing. So it is manufacturing, building technologies, consumer products, mining, medical, green technologies, transportation, aerospace, all of these career pathways need some type of foundation in mechatronics education. <coughs> so there are three goals of the grant. Goal one is to provide resources for high school and college faculty to deliver application-based engineering technician education. We will provide relevant career pathway training opportunities so all of our faculty both here at the college and with our partner high schools will travel together and go through professional development activities together and that builds camaraderie. The high school teachers know there's a pathway for their student to educate high school and go to work. There's a pathway for them to come through Virginia Western and go to work. And there's a pathway for them to go through Virginia Western to a four-year institution and then to work. We are going to offer, <clears throat> the grant provides opportunities for MIMIC workshops. NSF funded this development of MIMIC workshops, which is making industry meaningful in college. We will be traveling this summer through a lot of our business and industry partners, getting faculty out of the classrooms with the high school faculty and learning more relevance. <clears throat> Last year we did this and Sarah Garrell says, ha, ah, that's why I, I teach significant digits. She didn't even know why she taught the concept, but she saw the application in a job and now she can bring that back to her classroom. 
This summer here, next summer, we'll be going up to Harrisonburg. So we partnered with Blue Ridge Community College and we'll be traveling through the Blue Ridge region in Harrisonburg. They have American Safety Razor, Coors, a lot of great industry there. And then the last summer we'll be at Tidewater Community College and Steel, you may know from Chainsaws and Weed Eaters, they have a manufacturing facility right near Tidewater Community College and they advertise for mechatronics engineering technicians every day of the week and they can't fill the need. So. This is our way of letting them know that we're here. The grant will pay for 15 personal CNC machines a year where we are gonna purchase. This is the CNC milling machine. CNC stands for Computer Numeric Controlled. And the students will be able to take these machines home and play with them. The whole idea there is if students have to come into a lab, they're a lot, um, they don't have a lot of incentive to come in and learn, so we want them to take them home and play with them and build things. And you'll, never, you'll be very surprised with what they do. And the last part of goal one is building a fab lab. <clears throat> we get students every day that have had no experience tinkering with what they're learning. I, brought, I had a student last year who brought me a lock washer and he said, Mr. Horan, this washer's broken. <laughs> It's designed that way, silly, right? So we have students that don't have that experience. So the purpose of the Fab Lab is to motivate our students. We know where education is heading, retention, um, success, and so we have to do be innovative in the way that we retain and recruit our students. So there's goal one. Goal two is expand our industry-based skills through employer engagement. And I thought, well, still a lot of words, but I put pictures. Everyone up here is a current partner of the Mechatronics program, so these are industries that hire our graduates currently or provide internships. So we have Gala Industries, they, they make the equipment that makes plastic pellets faster than anybody else in the world, and that's right here in Botetourt County. <clears throat> Matalsa builds truck frames, so big tractor trailer frames, they start with a big roll of steel and they unroll it and use um, robotic welders and laser cutters and build truck frames. Optical Cable has donated, will be donating all the fiber optics to the new STEM building. They build fiber optic cables here in Roanoke now. Dynex makes uh, friction disc pads for transmission industry. Siemens, of course, is one of our certification partners and a lot bigger company than we all realize. Plastics One, that's where I was an automation engineer. They are also hiring our graduates and R. Donnelly, a printing company. So those are our current companies. We've already added, <clears throat> excuse me, we had to add five new ones. AEP is industry partner number one that we've added to the grant in the short time that we've had it. So we're gonna provide stackable credentials and certifications. The chancellor says we wanna triple the number in mechatronics. We will have at least seven certifications in that AAS degree. The first one through one semester will be the Manufacturing Technician Level 1 certification. Again, students can get that in a semester. The Siemens Mechatronic System certification, they can get in a year. And then the Level 2 certification is with the entire AAS degree. And the grant will pay for industry mentors to come in and tell the students, right, pull your pants up, show up to work on time, the soft skills that industry is requesting and requiring of our graduates, we need a, a mentor to come in and kind of guide the students and help them in that way. Some people don't really realize this, but Virginia Western is one of 35 schools on the planet that has this certification. That's a big deal. We're in 10 countries, we're one of 35. So Virginia Western is listed. This is their international marketing literature. And you see Virginia Western as one of those key partners in the country. And, and what that certification means is that our students are marketable internationally. They could go to work in Asia. They could go to work in Europe. They could go to work in Roanoke. It's up to the student. The third goal of the grant is to increase diversity through innovative recruitment. So we've hired an industry liaison. He's already been hired. And he also serves as our career and technical student organization liaison. So we are developing stronger relationships with our industry partners. And this person is out there visiting the industry, helping us with apprenticeships and internships. The next thing that under goal three is we are buying 
around 60 of these little microcontrollers a year for students to take home and play with. Students have already come up with their own projects. We implemented that this semester, but what we found is if the students can have this microcontroller in their hands and they can go through it and build some confidence, they're able to take that a whole lot further and think on their own. We are gonna offer a career counselor education. We had NASA on campus less than a year ago who was in here talking to the high school counselors saying, we need engineers and we, we need wrench turners, but more importantly, we need somebody in the middle who can put all this together, fabricate and design and make it work. We're gonna offer a technology scholar program to reward and encourage students. And of course, we'll offer summer camps. So I took a picture, uh, I did this about three summers ago, we offered a GEMS camp, Girls Embracing Mechatronic Systems. So these girls came on campus for an entire week, they learned Inventor, SolidWorks, basics of electricity, and they designed their own wind turbine, and then we hooked up a fan to their wind turbine, and that wind turbine powered a pump, which pumped water into a graduated cylinder. And so the girl who designed the most efficient wind turbine, using the same amount of air who pumped the most water won, and they had a blast. Short of a, a few cat fights, we had a great week. It was an awesome week. So I believe I'm well under my 15 minutes, Dr. Anderson, but I wanted everyone to just kind of get a feeling for the, the Pace Me grant. And I could field questions, I think, if we have a few minutes. No? All right, thank you.